Good morning, everyone. Let us start with genetic program today. This is the second way of representing the hypothesis in genetic algorithm that we have seen in the last class. Okay, so let us continue with the same. So whenever we are using computer programs to represent hypothesis, we call it as genetic programming. To apply genetic programming to a particular domain, the user must define primitive functions and terminals. Genetic programming algorithm uses an evolutionary search to explore the vast space of programs that can be described using these primitives. First, let us see the representation. Programs manipulated by genetic programs are represented by trees. So these trees are very much similar to the past tree of the program. So by this time already you might have studied the compiler design where you are already aware of the past tree. So the same representation we will be following here. And here for every tree we have a parent node and we have the children, right? So here the parent node is nothing but the function call. Each function call is represented by a node in the tree. Okay, so this node is the parent node. And then the arguments that we will be passing to the function. Okay, arguments are the parameters that we pass to the function are given by the descendant nodes are the child nodes. Let us see one example. So this is our program. So which we want to design using the genetic program. So uh, I'll just rewrite. It is sin x plus square root of x square plus y. So now, first of all, we should understand which are the functions and which are the arguments. Okay. So here, if you see, uh, a simple way to remember this, I will tell you. So we all are aware of operators and operands, right? Operands we know, operators also we know. Operator always takes an operand, one or more operands, in order to perform that particular operation, right? So in the same way, this operator, we are comparing it with a function. Okay, so here that function we are calling as a primitive function. Whereas the operands we take as the terminals are the arguments that we will be passing to the function. Okay. So now if you uh, see here, uh, first let us separate the operators as well as the operands. So if you see the operators, what are the operators we have here? Here we have a plus and then we have a square root and here we have x square. Okay. So in, in the computer programming, there is no x square. So, square root of x or power of x we, are, we will be computing. So, this is a power function. And then we have the plus also. And the remaining are the operands. So, now let us construct the parse tree. Okay. So, here the first operation that will that should be performed is Otherwise, let us come from, let us follow a bottom-up approach, okay? So, the first operation that needs to be performed is x square plus y should be performed, okay? I am following the bottom-up approach. You can construct a parse tree either using the top-down approach or the bottom-up approach. Bottom-up approach will be easy for the beginners, okay? So, y and here I should have the x square, x square again can be represented as x to the power of 2. And here this is my operand. Okay, that operand I am writing here. To this function, two arguments we need to pass. Those two arguments are x and 2. So x is our left child, 2 is the right child. Then Up to here, what did we do? We performed x square plus y operation we performed. So then what should be done? This result should be 
under this result is under the square root. So square root operation should be performed. So square root of this entire thing should be done. The result of this should be added to sine of x. This is just the past three representation, nothing more than that. But the only thing is which one should be taken as the parent node and which one should be taken as the child node. That knowledge we should have. So this is how we represent the computer program using genetic programming. We follow the past two representation. Let me clear the screen once. So now let us see the genetic operators. We already discussed in the earlier class, we have two genetic operators, crossover and mutation. Okay. So to perform that, first of all, we should know our population. Here, genetic programming algorithm maintains a population of individuals. These individuals are nothing but tree. Each tree, the tree once again is nothing but the computer program. Okay, so then um, the set of computer programs that you have is your population now. Now on each iteration, it produces a new generation. Always the use of genetic operators is to produce the new offsprings or the next generation. So this can be done using selection, crossover and mutation. So why we are using selection is in order, we will be doing the fitness function calculation and then we will select few hypotheses which are most favorable or which are having high fitness value. So that is how the selection is performed. So here to calculate the fitness of an individual program, you have to execute the program. Execute the program on a set of training data. Okay. So whichever program, so for the same training data, whichever program is giving you a better value of fitness, that I will be selected as the best hypothesis. And then performing the crossover operation. So crossover operation is always performed with two parents, right? So here we have two programs. Now replace a randomly chosen subtree of one parent program by a subtree from other parent program. Here. The program we are representing in the form of a tree. So each tree has subtrees in it. So now one subtree of parent one is replaced with another subtree of parent two and vice versa. Let us see this operation with an example. I'll just rewrite these two parents. Parent one is sine x plus two to the power of x plus y. And parent two is sine x plus square root of x square plus y. This three we just now we have created. I'll just do this. Uh, The first parent node is this. This is the top down approach. Then we have to do power. Right. And then So before to this, a plus operation should be done. X square plus Y should be done. This is there in the previous slide. You can just go back and uh, you can do it. So 
So now let us do this parent. Similar to the earlier representation, here I follow the bottom up approach, which will be easy. So in the bottom up approach, first we should represent 2 to the power of x plus y. So I'll just rewrite this. It is 2 to the power of x plus y. I hope now it is easy for you to represent. Okay. So the first operator is the power operator and then 2. So then comes, uh, we should draw this particular part plus the left child of this is x. Right child of this should be y. Okay. So we have done this part. So now what should be done? This sub 3 should be added with the signs. So now what should be done? The crossover operation should be done. So in the crossover operation, as we discussed, we are performing crossover on these two. So randomly we will be picking some subtree of the parent one. Similarly, another subtree of the parent one. And we must swap these two. So okay, we should perform a crossover. So in this tree, we have to replace it with this particular part. The other part remains the same. So there will be no change in this particular part. Okay. So to this tree, we have to add this part. So that means it must be connected here. Uh, let me redraw this. So we are having a plus operation. And then the sign X. No change in this part. And up to our operator, there is no change. And the left operand 2 also remains the same. So these are the terminals. All the nodes which are there at the leaf level, we call them as the terminals. And here, this part should be replaced with this part, this part of the parent 2. So this is the subtree. So to the power of x and 2. Okay. So we perform the first one. So now again let us perform on this particular tree. The crossover operation on this tree. Okay. So here this part there will be no change in this particular part. Yes, we are taking minus. There is no change in this particular part. Here also there is no change. And followed by this, we have a plus. And then over. Okay, so this part remains the same as that of the parent. And the remaining should be copied from the other tree. So in the other tree, the uh, sub-tree that we selected is this to the left of this we have x This is how the crossover operation will be performed. Okay, if required mutation also can be applied. But so far, whatever programs are applied by POSA, so there is no mutation operation. So this is how the genetic programming is working. And if you want you to decode this, let us see what this program tells us and let us see the other also. Okay. So this is sine of x plus square root of x plus y plus y. 
then this is sine of x plus e to the power of this is x to x to the power of two to the power of x to the power of two. Okay, so these are our offsprings. This is the first offspring, and this is the second offspring. Always we will be performing the genetic operations in order to generate the next generation or the offsprings. Okay, so this is how it will be done. That's it for today's video, and uh, we will continue with the genetic program. One more example we will discuss in the next class.